In this video, we're putting the spotlight on Himoto Umaru-chan, looking at its early English-speaking fandom, two sub-releases of the anime, and its love-hate reception in the West. Because look, Umaru-chan is one of those shows that either clicks with you and is comedy gold, or it doesn't click with you and perpetuates the stereotype that anime was a mistake. The show's premise explains what I mean. Himoto Umaru-chan stars Umaru Doma, a perfect high school girl that gets stellar grades, has many talents, and is the envy of her peers. Once she gets home though, she shrinks, which is never explained by the way, and her personality does a 180. Umaru when she's home is a lazy, selfish girl that loves to do typical otaku things like indulge in junk food, play video games, read manga, browse the internet, and so on and so forth. All the while, she bosses around her hardworking brother Taihei, who in turn gets on Umaru's case for her sloppy lifestyle. Umaru has one more alter ego that's kind of an in-between, that being UMR, an expert gamer that could dominate everything from crane games to fighting games. Situations in this show range anywhere from Umaru eating too many snacks and not having room for a hearty dinner, to accidentally breaking a fragile gift and needing to remake it as best she can to not get in trouble, to her inside self being discovered by a classmate but is mistaken for being a younger sister so Umaru just plays along. Yes, it really worked. Before we get into the semantics of why people think this show is good or bad, let's go back to a time when the fanbase was smaller. The English-speaking fandom dates back to not long after the manga began. Japan first experienced Himoto Umaru-chan in the pages of Young Jump on March 14, 2013. Hey, that's Pi Day. The first English scanlation of the manga was a joint project by Dragon and Griffin Scans and Manga Ichi Scanlation Division, chapters dating back as early as June that year. The series was mostly referred to by its Japanese name in the growing fandom, although some fans called it My Two-Faced Little Sister. Without boring you with the details, Himoto is a Japanese portmanteau that basically means the same thing. Early reactions on social media and forums mostly praised the little hamster girl and her escapades. The humor, the references, and the cuteness all resonated with readers. But as is the case for 90% of manga series, it blew up in the West when the series became animated. The Himoto Umaru-chan animated series was announced on December 13th, 2014 to the excitement of existing fans and intrigue of newcomers. The show premiered on July 8th, 2015 as a late night anime. As in, the anime aired in Japan at Midnight. midnight. Now, I try not to cover anime this new on the channel, because 2015 was only... Existential dread aside, Umaru-chan was about to have a lot more fans in the West, as it was picked up for a simulcast release on ta -da -da -da, Crunchyroll. The American release retained the Japanese title, not opting to use something like My Two-Faced Little Sister. You know the drill by now. Premium users of the platform could enjoy new episodes with subs ad-free at 3pm Eastern, 12pm Pacific, just after it aired in Japan. Free users could see the subbed episodes in standard definition with ads a week later. The English translation was made by Michelle Tyman, who has translated dozens and dozens of shows for both Crunchyroll and Funimation. Taiman is also a big fan of Umaru-chan, saying it was one of her favorite projects to translate. The same day Umaru-chan premiered, Houston-based company Sentai Filmworks announced they had licensed the anime for digital and home video release. This raised speculation the company would create an English dub, but such a release was not yet on the horizon. Observant fans on social media noted some mistranslations or cases of poor wording in the Crunchyroll simulcast subs, but these didn't disturb the experience for most viewers. They were still better than Hong Kong subs or God help us, AI subs. They did have some gems though, like Umaru's writing on an omelet being translated as GAME NOW! This English subbed version of Umaru-chan is harder to come by as Crunchyroll's license to the series expired on March 31st, 2022. However, some of this subbed release lives on through clips, screenshots, and ancient torrents from the cat site. The subs were also used for the broadcast on Ye in the Philippines. For this analysis, we'll also be looking at the more readily available subs released by Sentai Filmworks in 2017, translated by Javier Lopez and Eric Stimson. According to Stimson's Facebook page, he only translated openings and endings for Sentai, so it's unlikely he was involved in translating the actual show. This analysis will cover most noteworthy changes, but will not cover everything. One major difference right off the bat between the two subs is the Crunchyroll subs use honorifics, while the Sentai subs don't. There's debate in the realm of Japanese entertainment enjoyers whether English translations should or shouldn't have honorifics, but that's not a discussion I'm gonna touch. Let's just say both are valid and call it a day. 
While the new subs don't use honorifics, both the Sentai and Crunchyroll subs keep some idiosyncrasies of Japanese culture and language. For instance, instead of Umaru calling Taihei by name, she calls him Big Brother in the Sentai subs and Oni-chan in the Crunchyroll subs, which is yet another point of contention for translation. But that's a topic for another Umaru video. Bouncing off the Oni-chan thing, Umaru's scary classmate Kirie that fell for Umaru's ruse as being Umaru's little sister named Komaru, not to be confused with the best girl in Danganronpa, don't at me, ends up looking up to Komaru and becoming a friend. Kirie calls mini Umaru master in both sets of English subs, as in Japanese she uses the word shisho. The quirks of Japanese appearing in the subs don't end there. When Umaru is at home and in her little kid mode, she further acts like a kid by referring to herself in the third person a la Elmo from Sesame Street. In Japanese, referring to oneself in third person is something attributed to kids, whereas in English that's more like a dim-witted caveman kind of thing. Seriously, we apologize. We had no idea you guys were still around. Himoto Umaru-chan contains many pop culture references. The show parodies everything from Hatsune Miku, to Pokemon, to Street Fighter, to friggin' Ace Attorney and Danganronpa. While many viewers in the West will recognize references to the likes of Friday the 13th and Neon Genesis Evangelion, there are references so Japanese that even the most devout weaves may not catch them. That's where the translators went the extra mile and explained quite a few that may slip past a Westerner's radar. The subs point out references to the sports anime Prince of Tennis, the life sim game Bokunatsu, the drink Kalpis, and the clothing store Uniqlo. The translators went all out in episode 11 as they explained all the references to Japanese snacks, including the rivalry between two chocolate cookie brands. But it's not just pop culture references that receive translators' notes. In episode 1, the subs explain the title of Himoto, which helps explain the title of the show itself. So kudos to the subbers for not leaving viewers wondering what the hell a Himoto is. The subs do localize one reference that's basically a one-to-one -one with the English-speaking world. Surprisingly, the show was allowed to reference the family computer, aka the Famicom, Nintendo's 8-bit home console. Most of you watching probably know this better as the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES, and the subs reflect this. The same vignette was also allowed to reference Hasbro's Game of Life by name. There is at least one reference caught in the Crunchyroll subs, but not Sentai Filmworks's. Yapu Answers, an obvious parody of Yahoo Answers. While even back then the now-defunct website in the West is best remembered through memes, in Japan the site is still alive and well, and not just a big meme. I'm not sure why the Sentai subs left out this reference. And what's a slice of life anime like this without other dialects? Umaru's soft-spoken best friend Nana Ebina hails from the Akita region, and thus has an Akita dialect. Ebina taught herself to suppress her native dialect, but despite her best efforts, the dialect slips out from time to time. Reportedly, the Akita dialect in Japan is viewed as a lazy, country bumpkin type of speech. The subs chose to localize this as being a southern accent. Now I'm not just talking like y'all or whatever, like, Hank Hillisms you could think of. Uh, I haven't even finished breakfast and that boy ain't right. I'm talking straight up, that's some goodies. Yeah, that kind of southern. And that's another Japanese dialect I've covered now. Oh, we're not done with the intricacies of the Japanese language yet. Umaru's self-proclaimed rival, the energetic Sylvine for Tachibana, speaks in formal Japanese. She's a textbook example of the trope on TV tropes, formal characters use Keigo, under the Ojo label, as her family is wealthy. The subs adapt this in her speech being more formal English, such as using shall instead of will and phrases like fear not. The adaptation gives that energy of unusual formality. The Sentai Filmworks subs are pretty top-notch, but aren't without their faults. Eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that the Uniqlo explanation had not one, but two typos. There are a couple mistakes here and there, but in general, these subs were expertly made. Enough boring translation analysis. Where's the drama? Let's get into what you're really here for. Why people love and hate this show. The thread for episode 1 on my anime list had about 51% of users rating this show 5 stars and about 24% 4 stars. Early reactions greatly consisted of the words cute, funny, and synonyms of these words. So many reviews and comments at the start and over the weeks to follow either compared this show to Ore Imo or feared it would become Ore Imo. For those who don't know what the hell Ore Imo is, it's an anime slash manga that has strong elements of... Uh, sweet home Alabama, if you catch my drift. Thankfully, Umaru and Taihei would not develop this kind of relationship, although some doujins may have you believe otherwise. 
As the season went on, Umaru's presence became more prevalent on social media and became a meme queen with otakus. The little otaku even got her own subreddit that opened on August 25th, 2015, a bit less than two months after the show's premiere. But as more reviews, threads, and comments flooded the English-speaking internet about this anime starring an orange-clad gamer girl, there was a growing hatred for Umaru. Let's address the elephant in the room. The biggest dividing aspect of Himoto Umaru-chan is Umaru herself. Being the lead character, just about every vignette has Umaru's lazy, bratty personality on full display. Stories involve her acting like she does in private, as well as situations in which she needs to juggle her triple life. For better or worse, she retains her troublesome true colors from episode 1 onwards. It's not even just that she is the way she is, it's that her personality goes mostly uncontested. Those that were not turned off to the show in episode 1 saw Umaru have times where she isn't just a selfish little sh**. Such cases include taking care of her brother when he was sick and using her different personas to bond with her friends. The closing portion of this 5 out of 5 star review by Alan Moody from Them Anime Reviews echoes this. There's a rare genuine sweetness and intelligence behind the show, though it takes some time and patience to discover it. And I suspect a lot of viewers might just look at Umaru's selfish nature and give up watching early. Please don't. Even Umaru has her moments. In time. Weekend Otaku compared the show to watching a Saturday morning cartoon. Quote, just great entertainment without too much thinking involved, unquote. But those that wanted nothing to do with Umaru were still surrounded by her in every anime community out there. Douchebag chocolate, <laughs> Douchebag chocolate, Chocolate? <laughs> what is this username? In 2016, referred to Umaru-chan as being an annoying fad like Minions. Perhaps in terms of a more recent anime, one could make this comparison to Pop Team Epic. Wait, how long ago was Pop Team Epic's debut? Six years ago, Jesus Christ. Umaru-chan is a pretty harmless show, all things considered, and there are far worse series in the medium of animation. That's why it may seem surprising to see this fiery hatred of the show on the web. Maybe not so much now, but definitely at the time. I mean, the top-rated review on Mal is a negative review, so. Now, what do I think of Umaru-chan? I mean, for God's sake, I chose to do this video. Although, shout out to the one person that requested it. My full thoughts on the series dip into spoiler territory, as I've also read the manga, so I'll save my complete review for later. But if we're talking about what made me stick around through season one, I don't know, I was having a great time watching the show. Yeah, Umaru is a little bitch, but I guess it never bothered me that much. As mentioned before, she has her moments, but beyond Umaru, season 1 illustrates a sort of brilliance in the writing, for lack of a better term. Learning that two of Umaru's friends are related to people in Taihei's social circle kind of blew my mind. But yeah, let's leave it there and I'll give my full verdict on the franchise later. In any case, I hope this section helped illustrate why people were divided on Umaru-chan back in the day. I feel that over time people have softened their criticism of the anime, perhaps because it's less talked about now than it was, you know, nine years ago. God, that hurts to say. Now that it's been a while, I think aggregate anime rating sites reflect present day thoughts on Umaru-chan well. User ratings on my anime list, Annie list, and Anime Planet have the show floating around a 7 out of 10, which isn't too shabby. Even with its divisive nature in the West, the show is incredibly popular in its home country of Japan, receiving plenty of merch and even a video game on the PlayStation Vita. The game, titled Himoto Umaru-chan Raising Project, is a Tamagotchi-style game where players take care of Umaru and turn her into a functioning member of society instead of a lazy goblin, with additional visual novel-style elements included. Unsurprisingly, this never saw a release stateside. One, Umaru is a niche series to general consumers, and two, the Vita was unpopular internationally. By the end of the Vita's life, the install base in the US was a mere 2.7 million units, even lower than that of the ill-fated Dreamcast. There isn't even a fan translation of this title, so as of now, it's only in Japanese. After the Umaru-chan anime came and went, the series kind of hit a lull for English speakers. The manga carried on as usual in Japan, but Scanlations came to a crawl in 2016. By this point, a Scanlation group named Norway Scans was releasing Umaru-chan chapters in English. The team was too busy and understaffed to focus on those releases at the time. The drop didn't last for too long though, as Sentai Filmworks finally announced an English dub of the series at Anime Expo 2016 alongside several other properties. Come back next time as we look at Himoto Umaru-chan's solid English dub, its cast list of changes, and this behemoth of a box set. That's right, we're becoming an unboxing channel for a video. Stay tuned.
As always, thanks to all of my patrons and Twitch subs for supporting my videos, and a special shout out to the Mass Muchacho tier patron Coops. If you'd like to be listed here and have access to my supporter-only Discord server, please consider joining on either platform. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, share the video, and comment what you think of Himoto Umaru-chan, how you discovered the series, and any other topics you'd like me to cover in the future. The next video will be in three weeks, and we're going to be talking about Umaru for a few more videos so I can cover everything possible. I had a blast re-watching the show, and the dub is interesting, so I look forward to seeing what you all think. Also, fun fact, this is the first episode to not have any voice actor profiles at all because I didn't cover the English dub, but we'll have plenty next time. If you like Slice of Life shows, consider watching my videos about the timeless hit K-On by clicking here. Until next time, take care.